And BBC Radio 5 live presenter Nihal Arthanaika has bizarrely chosen to reignite his own race rap. Last month, he told a journalism diversity conference that an overwhelmingly white working environment at the BBC was affecting his mental health. And despite coming under widespread criticism, Nihal snapped back on social media yesterday, writing, I saw a lack of diversity in my workplace over a long period of time. It's affected me, and it was isolating and lonely. Yet all these GBBs loving types made me to be an anti-white racist. If a single one of them think I'm going to keep quiet, then they're even more stupid. So he's raking in a lucrative salary funded by the taxpayer and he's calling members of the public, like GB News viewers, stupid. Somewhat ironic, given that his tweet had a glaring grammatical error there, of course. Yep, spelling affected wrong. Still, though, Nihal promised that he would not be silenced. So we invited him onto the show to speak out, of course. We have been met with silence. Funny that. But should it stay that way? Should Nihal... Just shut up. Let me know your thoughts. Email me gbviews at gbnews.com. Tweet me at gbnews. While you're there, go and take part in our poll. I'll bring you the results very shortly. But to debate this now, I am joined by comedian and GB News presenter Leo Kurse and social commentator Joanna Jarju. Uh, Leo, I will start with you. Should Nihal keep quiet? Yeah, he should keep quiet. Before he keeps quiet, he should apologise for his egregious racism. He said that uh, working amongst white people made him feel uncomfortable. Imagine if, uh, if the roles were reversed and this was a white person saying they didn't feel comfortable uh, and, and where, wherever they lived. You know, perhaps it was a formerly white place that is now uh, predominantly uh, ethnic minority or, or if, if they worked uh, with a lot of ethnic minority people and they said it made them feel uncomfortable. That, that person, they wouldn't just be hounded from their job. They'd be paraded in the streets they'd be sent to jail. So it's absolutely disgusting that Nihal can, can behave in the most, uh, you know, in, in a way that would, uh, that would get somebody else condemned. And, uh, and he seems to be proud of it as well. It seems to be somebody he's, he's doubling down on. He doesn't see the error of his ways at all. OK, look, I'm sure Nihal would deny that he has been egregiously racist, but I don't know, Joanna, has he been and should he keep quiet? Well, first of all, I don't think that um, Nihal should keep quiet on the subject of diversity. And when he did make his comments, he was we have to look at context here. He was at a diversity conference. So he was talking about what it feels like to be a minority within the BBC. Where I do think that he's gone wrong is, and I'm quite surprised as somebody who basically talks for a living, I would think that he would be a lot more careful with his words and know that something like that can get the message completely lost. But I think that there's other ways that he could have phrased it. He could have said, you know, it, what, it, what it makes me feel like when I walk in, I don't see any other faces that look like me. He didn't necessarily need to reference white faces and I think it's interesting actually um that it was mentioned about oh well if a white person said this about you know brown people that happens all the time and if it was actually done on this program where somebody says London is like Londonistan and London is like you know um not British anymore not English anymore because there's too many brown faces a lot of people would still defend that especially on this program so I think it's really funny now that it's convenient that a brown person has said something similar on the reverse everybody's you know right. outraged all of a sudden or um, Leo, come back to that then. Well, London, London used to be uh, a, a white city. I mean, up until relatively recently, it was a predominantly white city, despite, despite what uh, the BBC's false reporting of history would have you have you believe. Uh, but I think you know it's interesting that Nihal was at a diversity conference and uh, and saying this, you know, being being racist against against white people because we all know that diversity doesn't really mean diversity; it means anti-white. Racism, and uh, you know, if we're looking, if we're talking about diversity in the BBC, where are the right-wing comedians? Where are the Brexiteers? These are the these are the people who are really marginalised in society, or certainly certainly in the BBC. Uh, Joanna, if Nihal is taking a taxpayer-funded wage, at least partly, anyway, should he be able to make comments like this? Do you think? And he's a BBC employee, at least in part. You know, do you think that's the kind of thing that people? should be doing? I mean, some people have accused him of stoking a, a race war. Well, again, I'll go back to the, the facts that I said that it's about the context as well of where he was talking. He was talking about diversity. He didn't just wake up one day and say that, you know, and said that all white people make him feel uncomfortable. And I'd actually take issue with the fact that he was quoted as saying uncomfortable. I'm not sure that he actually said that. He used another word. Um, he says it, but, it you know, affected I, his mental health, he said. 
yeah, it said that it made it affected his mental mental health. But when you when you reference it like uncomfortable, it makes it seem as if why he's saying that white people make him squirm or something. I think you know well, using the right words. Saying they give him mental health is issues. Really bad, Joanna. Yeah, I mean, he was kind of saying they give they give him mental health issues. I'm not sure that's any better, is it, really, Joanna? Well, I mean, when you say uncomfortable, usually when if somebody was to say that black people make them uncomfortable, mm. obviously you would look mm. at it in a different context. I think talking about his mental health being um, affected due to diversity is different. But anyway, I do think that when this is, you know, flipped on its head, a lot of people defend this. If somebody had said this yeah. about black and brown people, you would all be saying, oh, well, they're playing the race card all of a sudden because Nihal has done exactly the same I thing. I think that's a little bit unfair. I, I, think, I think that's a little bit unfair. I think, I think it's, it's possible to have discussions as we often do here on this show and at this channel about uh, things like diversity, about things like immigration, about things like multiculturalism, without being egregiously saying, oh, there are too many people of a certain colour in a particular country and that's damaging my mental health. I mean, I, I personally would find that uh, as being beyond the pale, but I, I do I do accept the, the thrust of what you're saying, Joanna, though. Um, Leo, you yeah. know, look, should the BBC actually be looking to take action here? I always feel uncomfortable saying that anyone should lose their job over it, but I mean, you know, should, should he apologise? Should the BBC <laughs> apologise? Well, I mean, it's interesting. Would the BBC take action if a white person had said, uh, "Listen, I, I don't like working here. Uh, there's too, there's too many people uh, with the, you know with brown skin or, or whatever it is." I think you know we know that that person would be out the door pretty sharpish. So, I mean, all all I'm asking for, all I'm asking for is, is parity. All I'm asking for is uh, is for people not to be judged on the colour of their skin, but for everybody to be treated equally. I think you know Martin Luther King asked for that as well. Leo, I'll sit with you, I, and then I'll give the final word word to jo Joanna. But Leo, you know, if if now does think that a lot of the pushback here is quotes on quotes, you know, GBBs types, right? <laughs> and he thinks that, you know, basically anyone who disagrees with him, from what I can gather from his tweets, anyone who disagrees with him is you know, a thick right-wing gammon. <laughs> I can't help but wonder whether or not that BBC presenter has just insulted the vast majority of the country, because that does seem to be the amount of people who have the views that are pushing back on him here. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, he's really displaying his own prejudice there, uh, which is what, you know, he should have been talking about at the diversity conference. He should have been talking about how GBBs or whatever he wants to, whatever whatever pejorative term he wants to describe uh, the wonderful viewers of the channel as, uh, he should be talking about how they're discriminated against. And with regards to the, the comparison to, to London, uh, saying, you know, some people say, well, London's changed. London has changed. The, I mean, Nihal is complaining that something hasn't changed enough for his life. It's like me going to Sri Lanka and saying, well, this, uh, you haven't imported thousands and uh, hundreds of thousands of white people to make me feel comfortable. So that's the difference. London has changed. Nihal is complaining that somewhere hasn't changed. All right. uh, Joanna, do you think Nihal should continue to double down on this? Because that is the way he's going at the moment. <laughs> I think, that, I think that Nihal should continue talking about diversity, but I think that he should be very careful, uh, you know, offending other people. I do think that sometimes it goes both ways. Um, but the thing that I'm uncomfortable with is that I feel like when other people say stuff about black and brown people mm. and people have a problem with it and they're offended, they say, oh, you're playing the race card all of a sudden because Nihal said it, you know, everyone's up in arms that I feel like usually defends this thing. I think we should all respect each other from both sides, um, you know, and that's the way that we should live. But it's just a shame that when it's the other way around, people say it's the race card and don't take it seriously till it's on their doorstep. All right, both of you thoroughly enjoyed another rip-roaring head-to-head there. Thank you very much. So that's uh, comedian, GB News presenter Leo Kirsten, social commentator.